Hello, my fellow wine lovers. I'm Ryan the Wine Guy, and this is the Wine Review. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, never mind. Okay, well, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get like a opening credits thing going. I can't really do that live. But today I am going to be reviewing a Australian wine. It is 19 Crimes, and it's their Cabernet Sauvignon. 19 Crimes makes four different types of wines. Um, most of the other three, I think all the other three, are solely red blends. They have their original red blend. They have the Banished, which is new. And then they have the Warden. The warning's a little bit more on the pricier side. This one usually goes for around $10.99, although most places you can be able to see it at around on sale at $7.99 or even $8.99. So it's a very inexpensive wine, but considering for how much it usually goes for, like I said, $10.99, even up to maybe $12.99, depending on where you buy it from. But usually it will be within that $10 area. The bottle looks like this. And you want to make sure that if when you get this one that you try their Cabernet Sauvignon, as you see. Vintage 2015, so still a fairly new wine. But most of their wines look like this. They have the Banished, which has a face, their Red Blend has a face, and then the Warden just has a list of crimes. So they give you a little synopsis about um, Australia, and this is based out of southeastern Australia, but it gives you a little synopsis about how Australia was formed. Um, Many of you pro probably know this, but um, there was a time way back when, um, under British control, when convicts were convicted of crimes, instead of being like put to death, they would be banished, um, and they would be banished to Australia, and since therefore became the creation of Australia. So, in other words, you can say that Australia was founded and formed by a bunch of criminal convicts. Good job, guys. Um, but, you know, they've gotten their act together for the most part. So, I'll just read you what it says on the back. 19 crimes turn criminals into colonists. Upon conviction, British rogues, guilty of at least one of 19 crimes were sentenced to live in Australia, rather than death, as I said. This punishment by transportation began in 1788, there you go, I got the year, and many of the lawless died at sea. For the rough-hewn prisoners who made it to shore, a new world awaited. As pioneers in a frontier penal colony, they forged a new country and new lives, brick by brick. This wine celebrates the rules they broke and the culture they built. Now, what it doesn't say on there, that fun fact for you all, that I actually learned, one of the youngest people to ever be banished and sent to Australia, as far as I found, I think was as young as either eight or nine years old, the youngest person to be sent there was either eight or nine years old. So you look at back then, that's that's pretty crazy. So we've definitely come a long way in knowing that finishing eight-year-olds is not right, although as much as we would love to, <laughs> uh, we can't. Um, but anyway, I will show you the wine in the glass. Pretty nice dark purple color to it. A 
which I like. I like when I'm drinking cabs. I like there to be a good purplish, dark reddish, nice little rim. As you can see, you're swirling around, letting it aerate a little bit. All right, so here we go on the nose. There's definitely some good oak on the nose. I'm getting aromas of vanilla. And there's a nice good fruitness on there. Some nice dark fruit, blackberries, plums. Slight little bit of licorice. And I want to say just a little teeny hint of black pepper. Nothing overpowering now. It's mostly the vanilla, the berries, and then that black licorice that comes into play. The 13.5% alcohol by volume, which is common for most Australian wines. So it's not very low, but it's not very high like the one I did yesterday. But it is to be expected with Australia. You're looking at around 13.5, 14%. So pretty much right in the middle. Yes, I am funny as hell, I know. <laughs> but it's right in the middle of when it comes to wine. Still, something I usually like to aim for. I usually like to stick within that 13 to 14% range. You go much higher than that, uh, like the one yesterday... That one got a little rough. It was good, but they can get a little rough. So on the palate, <sighs> the palate consists of, wow, it's a very young wine, very young indeed, a little tart but not like, ooh, ooh, tart. Um, but you definitely get it at first tint. There's a lot of, like, juiciness as far as berries go. I'm doing good, Tamisha. Thank you. How about you? But there's a lot of good berries going on in there. Um, some well, like, rounded, juicy, ripe berries in there, which pretty much gives it off its tartness. I would say there's definitely blackberries in there. Plum, maybe even like a small little chart cherry. There's even, um, you get that oakiness as well. You get that creamy vanilla, um, I don't even know if that's a word, but you get that creamy vanilla uh, taste in it as well. I would also say followed by a, uh, a little bit of like coffee or some sort of espresso flavoring to it. A hint of cocoa. I'm getting some lingering kicks of some lingering kicks of licorice, not much, and some just a little bit of that peppery that is in the aroma as well. But it is not overpowering by any means. What really, as I said, I found to be the most um, noticeable was those ripe berries at the front with that creamy, oaky, smooth taste to it. So it's definitely a very, very drinkable wine. Uh, definitely a wine for beginners or for people who aren't really into really the um, powerful Malbecs or Shirazes. This is definitely a, it's a kind of, um, it's a smooth cab, it's a mellow cab. Um, I've had cabs that have been more bolder, and I've had cabs that have been more bitter. Um, this one just is a slight tart, um, but that's because I feel that it is such a young wine. As I said, the vintage is 2015, so it's still such a young wine with a lot of things to grow in it. Um, that's why I'm kind of going to give this one, I'm not going to give it a terribly low rating, but I'm not going to give it a terribly high rating. I'm going to give this one, well, uh, it's, it's difficult because it is, 
It is good, but I feel that it has room to grow. I'm going to say 3.5. Um, I don't want to give it as low as a 3 because it's better than that. But it's not quite at my par as 4 or above. Definitely not a 5 out of 5. But I'm going to say a nice 3.5. It does have all these good flavors and good aromas. And I feel that as this wine builds and as this company builds with their wines, this could turn out to be something really good and something that I think we can all, all appreciate in another five years from now. So that's a three and a half star rating. Although I'm not saying don't try it now, by all means, try it now, see what you think. Um, as I said, if you are one of those people who really likes these smooth metal wines, uh, th this is something that is right up your alley. And um, that, that's why it's sometimes so hard to give these ratings because I give ratings based off of my personal taste and it's also hard to try to interpret other people's. So for me, I take that into account. I do like my calves creamy. I do like them to have good fruit on them. I'm just not so thrilled that it has that slight tartness at the beginning. So that's another reason why it gets a little bit lower than what it should. Although, as I mentioned, the coloring is good. It's a nice dark color. Um, paying full price, as I said. Full price, not on sale. Some places you would be paying maybe as high as $12 or $13. I would recommend finding places on sale. You can easily find it on sale for $7.99, maybe even $6.99 at the least, but you're looking around $7.99, $8.99. It's um, pretty much sold in all liquor stores. This is not one that you have to go out of your way to go to one of the higher-end liquor stores, any liquor stores to sell it. And make sure you look for the Cabernet Sauvignon. A lot of their bottles look alike. At least three of them look similar. Uh, they have a more expensive one, which I have not tried, and I may do that later on in the year. Show you all the bottle one more time. Yeah, look at that guy, you know? Creepy dude. Oh, gosh. I guess when you're drinking this wine, keep the bottle not facing you. I want that thing looking at you all night. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Just a recap. Aromas of blackberry, plum, vanilla, black pepper, and licorice. And on the palate. A little tart at the beginning, as I said. Pretty much identical to the aromas, only I do get a little bit of tart cherry in the taste. So, with that, it's just been a pleasure. And coming up on Friday, I will be reviewing a 2010 French wine. So, feel free to all join me on Friday and watch me totally butcher the name of the wine. Uh, because I know I'm going to. But regardless, I'll still show you what it looks like anyway, so that way you can all go out and find it. Well, it's been a pleasure doing wine reviewing with you all, and feel free, as I've said, to get in touch with me if you have tried this or when you do try this wine, to let me know how your feelings are towards it. And until next time, I am Ryan the Wine Guy. Cheers.